everyone. I want to take a little time with you today to talk to you about my vintage denim. I've been wearing them a lot with all of my row pieces and I have been getting a lot of questions, how to buy, where to buy. So I thought I'd share some of my knowledge with you. I'll qualify this by saying I'm not an expert. There are plenty of people out there that know far more than I do and you can find them on YouTube. They, they blog, they have sites dedicated to this. So if you need a pair authenticated or something of that sort, they're probably the best people to go to. But in my journey, in my search, I have gained a cursory amount of knowledge that I'm happy to share with you. And um, I'll give you a quick overview of the company and then we'll go into what to look for when you're buying your jeans. So uh, Levi's is a very old company, 1873 is when they were established. They came up with riveting. They put them in places on the denim. They were going to be prone to more distressing. So it extended the life of the jean uh, durability and um, it was a really, really key thing that propelled them forward in their, in their uh, success. When their patent for the rivets expired in 1890, the first batch of jeans that was produced after that was 501. And that's how this name came about. Also, they needed a new way to differentiate themselves because a lot more players came into the market with their own rivets and the red tab was born. They patented the red tab in 1936 and now, I mean, you hear red tab, it's synonymous with Levi's, 501s, excellent jeans, excellent fit. When you're shopping for your vintage jeans, there's a few things you're going to be looking for, whether or first of all, whether or not they're technically vintage. Uh, two, salvage denim is, is a really nice denim and uh, special and you're going to pay a little more for that. There's a big E that you're going to hear about. I'll get to that. Or first of all, whether it was made in the U.S. Because prior to 2002, all Levi's were manufactured in the U.S. In 2002, the San Francisco factory shut down and everything was then manufactured abroad. So technically not vintage post-2002. Doesn't mean the jeans aren't great. You could still get an excellent pair of jeans that you love that fit you well, and you could absolutely, I would suggest you keep them, you wear them. But if you're looking for true vintage and you're paying that price, you want them to be prior to 2002. And where you're gonna find that is on the back patch. It'll say uh, made in the USA. Sometimes the back patches now are quite faded. And so you can't see clearly it's there. I can see it, but uh, you probably can't from this uh, viewpoint, but you can also find it inside on the care label where it was made. And uh, salvage denim, they're just, they wear really well. It's what, what I loved in the 1980s. In fact, they stopped making salvage denim in 1985, 86. And um, that's why I guess they're highly sought after because they're really, really good quality and they wear very well. And there's a way to tell what a salvage denim jean is and it's if you flip the hem the bottom up um, and over you'll see the seams here this is a regular a, a regular seam so this is not a salvage denim this is what a salvage finish will look like on the inside see that white um, finishing it's very clean and uh, all salvage denim has that and then red line salvage is even more special and you'll see like a red stitching go down the white piece so those are special. Back to the E, what is the big E? The big E, well, when Levi's established their red tab, they put Levi's on the back of the tabs, their brand name. And uh, when you find them, you'll see that Levi's is written top down here. And then if you flip it over bottom up, you notice that the E is small. 1971 and prior, Levi's was all caps. So now we refer to that gene as the big E because post 1971, they made the E small. If you find a big E, it's a very big deal. Sellers will ask for a lot of money for them. And as a buyer, you can expect to pay sometimes well north of a thousand dollars. They're a collector's item. People buy them and throw them in a vault. If that's what you want, you're going to pay for them. Just know that. Anyway, they're very special and they're very hard to come by. The other thing about the tab, I had a pair of jeans that I bought and I panicked for a moment when I paid the price, got them home, loved them, then took a good look at them and the back is like this. See that red tab? The registered R symbol, but no Levi's written anywhere. Not on the front and not on the back. I thought fake, but turns out Levi's was required to produce a certain percentage of blank red tabs every year in their batches so that they could claim ownership of the red tab and not just the red tab with Levi's on it, because otherwise you'd have 
other competitors coming into the market with their red tabs, with their brand name on it and say, well, it doesn't say Levi's, so it's ours. So red tabs are Levi's owned and that's how they made sure of it. They produced a blank batch. I don't know what the percentage was, but every year they produced blank batches to secure the ownership of their red tab. You're also going to see orange tabs. Uh, orange tabs were reserved for trend pieces when they did bell bottoms or if there were embellishments, things like that. And I've also seen white tabs with black writing. This is where I'm out of my element. I'm not an expert. I know there are variations of the tabs, but the red tab is classically theirs. I'm going to spend time today talking to you about the 501 specifically. I love the 501s. I think they're the best shape. I, I think they're, they're definitely the best shape for me, and I think they're very flattering on everyone. I have done a reel about this, but what I find I like so much about the 501s is that they're uh, versus contemporary 501s. They're a bit more generous overall. The back piece is wider, so it's much wider than the, than the front. The front's narrower. The back comes up a bit higher and the front has a bit of a dip, so it wraps, it wraps around and hugs you nicely and it's very feminine. And like I said, I think it does flatter everyone. The 501s are classically a, a button fly. And uh, if you like the contemporary fit of the 501s, you're going to want to look for vintage 505s. And I think they have a zip fly because they fit more like a contemporary 501. But I'm a vintage 501 fan because I like a bit of a wider leg and I want it to be a bit more flattering on the hips and at the 501 is the, the vintage 501 is the perfect balance for that. Sizing, you're gonna to have to go up two to three sizes. That's typically the rule. Some people go up four sizes. I am a contemporary size 25 and I look for vintage 27, 28 Levi's. Sometimes I, I can get into a 26, but I'm just, as I age, I'm just not as comfortable in really tight jeans. So two sizes up. I have a pair here that have a waist size of 28 and they're still not a 28. It doesn't necessarily mean that that is what the waist is because uh, there's shrinkage and uh, people have a unique way of measuring. So I would ask the seller how they measured. A good seller is going to give you all the measurements you need, the waist, the rise, the inseam, the outer seam, the hips, and they're going to do multiple photos in different lighting because once you find your fit and if you figured out this is the right size for me, the next thing is, do I love the wash? You don't want to get it home having paid whatever you paid for them and then find the wash wasn't exactly what you'd hoped for. At five foot two, everything gets hemmed. I have to alter my jeans all the time my perfect length is 26 to 26 and a half. I do have short legs. That works with everything for me. It works with flats, it works for a small heel and my uh, fall boots and things like that. I used to have jeans altered to for different shoes and I don't do that anymore because then I'm limited to what I can wear them with and I, I have found that there is a magic length. At least I have found that for me, I have a magic length and that's where it hits on my ankle not above the ankle and not below, just at the ankle is where I have all my jeans altered. What I would suggest is play around with this. Have a pair altered to what you think is your perfect length. Err on the side of being longer rather than shorter and maybe have them leave a bit. So maybe have them just roll it up, pin it, walk around in it for a while. And then you know what your length is and every single pair of denim you get can be altered to that length. The other thing I'll say about alterations is make sure you ask for a Euro hem, European hem, or an original hem. What that is, is they take the original piece from the bottom, they cut it off, and they reattach it to your new desired length. So the underside will look like this. It's a bit bulkier, but really nice because you get a finished look. It looks like this was the original jean and that was meant for you. I had one, one pair of jeans where either I didn't specify or she forgot, and it came back regular hem. Regular hem is they adjust it to the length you want, chop it off, throw the original piece out, fold it over, and then you get this. There's nothing special about that hem, and my jeans have no mojo. So <laughs> there's a way to solve this problem. I can, I could, I guess, um, undo the seam and, and then it would be a frayed edge. There's also a way to distress it yourself. You can take a rock to it and rub it. And there are places apparently that do this for you as well, but I'm not going to be spending the time to do that. I think I'm just going to leave them as is. 
Um, in terms of washes, you can see I have three look the exact same. They're not, they're very, very unique. Each pair is unique and that's what I love about vintage. No two pairs are the same. And they all have a, a fun story to tell with lots of history in them. This pair is really cool. It's a bit darker than the rest. It's not, see, it's not really coming through on camera as how dark they are in person. But what I like about these is the bottom, there's like a, a inked crease. And uh, I had a pair of jeans just like this when I was around 15 or 16. And sometimes I wonder when I'm shopping for vintage Levi's if my, my pair have come home to me because I took very good care of mine and they never really had rips or stains and gosh, had I only known that how much they'd be worth, I would have hung on to them, but that was a long time ago. Dark rinses are very hard to find. You can find lighter ones more easily. I actually prefer the lighter ones when I'm looking for vintage because I think that's the beauty that they're faded and so it, it lends itself to a vintage look, but I'm still on the hunt for a darker pair. Black, extraordinarily difficult to find and I love the one pair I got where I got very lucky. The whispering on this is just, it's uh, really divine. The back is very thin and, and not so thin by the way that there's holes in it and if there were going to be holes, a good seller would pre-patch it for you. That's how you know they know what they're doing and saves you the work as well. But uh, look at that, the, the bum here, it's just so perfect. I really like them. And the legs are unique. One is different than the other. So shopping for vintage Levi's is a lot of fun. The good news is, is that they come up all the time. So you just have to keep looking. There's plenty of people all over the world, in fact, sourcing vintage Levi's. And where to find them? I find them on Etsy. I have tried looking on eBay, haven't had the best luck. I have tried just Googling vintage Levi's and going to unique stores, but even then, I don't prefer it. I think Etsy is sort of a one-stop shop that houses all the best sellers that carry a really good selection of vintage Levi's. Levi's themselves have a subsection on their website and even in some of their stores dedicated to uh, vintage Levi's. And I don't find they online, certainly they don't do a great job of um, telling you what the measurements are, nor do they have great photos, shockingly. So I still go to Etsy, that is my my the first place I look when I'm feeling like I want a pair of, of vintage jeans and it's not just Levi's they, they carry a plethora of other brands that are vintage as well I don't have a particular favorite but I did when I was preparing for this video and getting my jeans all lined up I noticed there was a bit of a theme two of these are from shop summer 91 and two of them are from stellar vintage and the pair I'm wearing is detour so shop detour vintage shop summer 91 and stellar vintage jeans those are the my three go-to's when I'm, I'm doing a search. I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you most, if not all, the information that you need to buy your first pair. If not, and if I got anything wrong, feel free to tell me. And if I've missed anything, tell me. And if you have a question, please leave me a message and I will get back to you.